see that one? That was a big wave. My name is Jamie Fleischwasser. I'm a graduate student at Stanford University in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. Today we're going to be doing a demo on mixing over coral reefs in Y2E2. The Stanford Interdisciplinary Graduate Fellowship provides me with a lot of tools to allow me to be successful in a future career in interdisciplinary work. Being located in Y2E2 also provides me with a lot of resources as there are many different departments hosted here. There is a computer lab, there are some fluid mechanics labs, and there's also a lot of environmental policy work taking place here. So I can collaborate with all these people without having to leave my building. Today I'm going to take you into the Environmental Fluid Mechanics Lab where I'm going to do a demonstration showing how um, water is very turbulent as it passes over coral reefs. In a bigger sense, um, this will have implications on how coral gets their nutrients from the water column and will help us have a better understanding of how corals grow and survive in different environments. The first couple dyes I'll release are kind of in the upper part of the water column where they don't really feel the, the corals as much. Um, and these dyes shouldn't mix out very much and they should stay quite concentrated. So you'll, you'll see the, the dark shade of blue for a long period of time, kind of as it travels down the chute. Then we're gonna get some dye to travel down this tube and come out right at the top of the corals. And that dye you'll see is gonna hit the corals and kind of get some rolling over and some eddies and some turbulent structure and mix out a lot faster than the stuff that we released up the top, which, you know, if corals are trying to get nutrients or if there's waves around, you can see how that might change how they get their food, depending on how the water's mixing above them. I don't think I would be here unless I thought that my work would change something or do something in the long run. And I think with understanding, let's say, how corals grow or adding some nugget of information to the kind of this big, uncertainty of what's going to happen to them. Um, that's what I'm passionate about. So ideally, in my research, if I were able to measure this in the environment, which I'm working on, um, and kind of correlated, let's say, you know, we've got a, a speed of two meters per second going over the corals, I could say, okay, well, two meters per second means that we've got eddies of potentially three centimeters. Like, well, with an eddy of three centimeters, we're mixing nutrients from this level down to the corals. And, you know, maybe um, corals will have a better chance of surviving in rougher waters with the climate change. You know, we're not sure what kind of implications it would have, but it'd be great to have a better understanding of kind of how the whole system works. You know, once you have your science established, you know, there's so many things you can do, whether it's going to the, your local congressperson and saying, I know a lot about corals. If you come up with an issue, you know, with corals or with some kind of environmental degradation of um, nearshore environments, like, you can come talk to me about corals for a good portion of the day.